what a performance. More importantly, what a defensive masterclass and win from your boys. Can I be excited now? Huh? To the chat. What? What were you guys saying? Everyone was calling this team average, calling, making fun of this team. Guys, what we just witnessed today with the chips down, with injuries, with players not available, with referee decisions still not going our way. We bossed the midfield. We found a way to win. And the substitutions that Mikhail Arteta made, they all impacted to, to help us get that goal. If you look back, Partey made the pass, I think, to create the chance. Then you have Kai Havertz getting the assist to Martinelli, Martinelli bearing it away. Absolutely beautiful to see a 1-0 win against Man City. I don't care what the way, how we did it. We haven't beaten these guys in 12 games. 5-33 to 33 aggregate. The way Hamza was coming all arrogant on every single stream talking to me. What now, bro? Big up to you, but what now, bro? <laughs> you know what it is. Mikel Arteta, he today, he finally beat Pep in the Premier League. And this team... Until we beat the champs, we could never, ever, ever consider ourselves legitimate opportunity to win and be the champs. We had to beat them last year at least once. We weren't able to do it. This year, we already beat them once, and this gives us the confidence to maybe push on for greater and bigger things. Now, going into this game, Saliba, what you said earlier, Terry, Rory called it. Saliba had Holland in his pocket. These guys created four shots the whole game. And one of them, if I'm not mistaken, was David Rea's shakiness in the first half. I don't know what that was, but David Rea, you need to fix up, bro. We can't have you shaky like this. You can't have you nervous. I get it. The fans can be nervous. People can be nervous. But once the game starts, you got to get ready. got to get composed. And the fact that this team weathered the storm, kept weathering the storm, uh, and there's just outstanding performances all over the pitch. You look at Declan Rice, amazing performance. You look at Saliba, amazing performance. I thought Gabriel Jesus worked his socks off the whole entire game. And, and Mikel Arteta, it comes back down to the manager. His decision-making helped us win this game, and he was not slow with the substitutions. He made that substitution at halftime. He seen that we needed pace in the, in, the second, in, in the first half. Second half, we had that pace, and eventually, once we got that breakthrough, we held on. The Emirates has erupted, and guys, it's time to start believing because a couple weeks ago after we dropped points against Fulham guys were calling us pretenders now what beating the best team in the country forget that beating the best team in the world mate it, it was out of this world today you, you've already mentioned there obviously Saliba and Gabriel pocketing him the way he did I want to ask you about your 100 million pound man Declan Rice in the middle today what did you make of, of that performance and how he led the midfield Declan Rice was the best player on the pitch by a country mile. There was nobody in that city midfield who could stop him. Every time they try to get past him, he would stop him. And you know what? Even if you did somehow bypass Declan Rice, we have two man mountains and arguably one of the best center half pairings in, in world football in Saliba and Gabriel behind him. So Declan Rice today, masterclass, this is why you pay $105 million for Declan Rice. And to all those people calling him overrated, bang average, look, open your eyes. Can you not see? When you pay top dollar, this is what you get. People saying we overpaid. Pep Guardiola himself said midweek he wanted him for games like this in a situation where Rodri could not play. And people telling me to calm down. If I'm not going to be excited right now, when am I going to be excited? Tell me that. When am I going to ever be excited? Beating Manchester City, you guys tell me to calm down when we beat Bournemouth. You tell me to calm down when we beat teams like Chelsea and stuff. But if we are playing one of the biggest teams, a hoodoo that we have not been able to beat, every single one of you Arsenal fans should be gassed and no one should be able to tell you nothing. And I'm going to hear excuses from these guys all week after this. But guess what? We're the ones that won and we got two weeks to celebrate because <laughs> you ain't got no games until the international break's back. <laughs> I, I get the excitement there, Jason. Do, do you share the excitement that Gal was demonstrating? Yeah, yeah. Come on. Of course, Emirates was being erupted. All right, we're back. I can't lie. Kai Havertz, yeah, I've always rated him. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, what a performance anyway. Um, what a performance. Saliba, I'm just going to put my head on the line. I'm just going to say this, yeah. I feel like he's one of the best centre-backs in the league. I think he's the best pretty much one of the best centre back in the league. I'm saying it. I'm saying this right now. Like every time I see this guy play, like I don't get panicked. Like the centre backs that we had in the past, like Mata Saka, Koscielny, these, these are I tend to panic in like difficult situations. But how we dealt with different different side strikers today and especially with Haaland, he dealt with them really well. I can't lie. And you know what? I feel like a proud dad today. Because like you know <laughs> really 
uh, generally I, I always I tend to like criticize Arsenal a lot. I give them that tough love, like you know they've been letting me down all these years. But honestly, there's there's no place and time to like state them off anytime here and there. But yeah, well, well, well played Arsenal anyway. Declan Rice. Show that he's a hundred hundred million hundred million pound player. Uh boss the midfield as well, boss the pitch as well. So fair play. Ben White, I need to shout him out as well. As soon as Doku came in, put him on locks. Literally, Doku didn't get a sniff. And yeah, fair play. Fair play to the gunners as well. This breeds confidence as well. And big up Kai Havertz playing in that center forward position, uh, holding up that put ball as well when he came on. Um, obviously to set up that Martinelli goal. And I felt like Martinelli when he came on, that kind of changed the whole game. Uh, Arteta kind of uh, brought the pace up as well and yeah I'm a happy guy today I'm smiling yeah I, I bet you are Brandon's here as well from, from a Guna point of view a massive win Havart steps up Martinelli steps up Odegaard delivers in a big game and Arteta gets the, the tactically absolutely spot on would you say yeah yeah perfect um, Gabriel Saliba by the way immense Absolutely immense today. Haaland, I didn't even realise that guy was playing. I've got to be honest. And you have to credit Gabriel and Saliba with that because they had him on absolute lock today. And look, it was a weird game tell because obviously everybody's excited. Everybody's looking forward to the game. And I felt both teams cancelled each other out. You know, you could see that Pep was obviously quite worried about the midfield situation at the beginning of this game. You could see what he was trying to do with Alvarez, with uh, Foden, you know, coming into them central areas, as well as, you know, you had Bernardo um, as holding midfielder, Rico Lewis in there. So it was very, very flooded in the midfield areas from both teams in that first half. And I think both teams were lacking width. They were lacking that, that pacey player out wide. And, you know, I'm quite glad that the manager came in at half time. He recognised that and he brought Martinelli on straight away. Now, I don't think personally Trossard should have been the player to come off. I think it should have been Eddie and Ketia because he didn't really offer us anything um, at all during that game. You know, normally I can credit that guy and say he works hard, but I don't think he worked particularly hard for Arsenal today. Um, but the substitution worked. You could see that in the second half from the moment that we kicked off. You know, we was causing more problems. We was pushing higher up the pitch. And that threat of having Gabriel Martinelli um, pacing behind, you know, really worried City. Then you see him, you know, making three substitutions at once. When do you ever see Pep Guardiola make three substitutions at once like that? And, you know, again, Arteta's reaction to that was absolutely spot on. You know, I, I was saying, um, doing my match previews and that for the game, that I was worried about Doku. Doku in particular, his pace, his power, his rawness. I just thought, you know, Zinchenko inverting into the midfield. Ben White, he's not the greatest 1v1 defender. That's where City can get at us. And, you know, again, you have to credit the manager. He recognised this. He brought on Tommy Asu. And Tommy Asu and Ben White absolutely locked him down. So, yeah, it was, it was a... A masterclass by Arteta today, I think, because I don't think it was necessarily come down to personnel because of the way that the two teams cancelled each other out in the first half. I think it was always going to come down to what the manager can do, uh, what both managers can do tactically to change the game and what we've got to offer off the bench as well. And we just... Our players, you know, Martinelli and, that, and Havertz came on and performed better then Man City substitutes. And that's what won us the game tell. But, mm. you know, it's I'm happy. I'm happy to get... That is that nice seeing you happy, Bran. I'm not going to lie to you, mate. It's, it's nice It's nice seeing you happy. We are going to talk City on the stream because we've got some super chats. They're going to keep the gal and the boys on um, uh, for your kind of... Listen, and there would be people that are going to say you're over-celebrating, but I ain't having none of it, bro. Man United were accused of it yesterday. And the I, I didn't say this in a video this morning because I didn't make any additional content. But the reason I defended Arsenal all of last year on the over-celebrating charges, I knew as soon as my team won a game late last minute that needed to be celebrated, we'd get accused of exactly the same thing again. There is no such thing as over-celebrating. It's never been a thing ever in the history of football. 
it's just an agenda against the, the two biggest clubs on socials. Uh, Prince here says, Gabriel is a top five centre back. I, I don't care what anyone says. Would you agree with that, Egal? Gabriel as well. Would you put him in the top five centre backs in the Premier League? On form right now, but I don't think he is overall. That's that's what I'm going to be honest. But on form right now, you can't name five. Probably you name the two Tottenham guys, the two Arsenal guys, and Dia and Ruben Diaz. That's it. I don't think mm. there's any more better informed players right now than those four. I hear you there, bro. Uh, Doku and Harlan did nothing. Yeah, they they were both just pocketed all game today. Completely pocketed. Um, Doku was out there playing like Anthony, bro. Uh, baby Shark. Do, 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 do. I like it. Go ahead. Sorry, go on again. Go on, bro. I think Arteta for once outwitted Pep because Pep, because uh, this whole thing, this whole media leaks and everything, I think it was just mind games. Pep was probably expecting Bakao Saka to be playing. And then the way that we changed the game later in the game with the substitutions where we had more of our big boys on, we just grew into the game more and more and City looked neutralized for 90 minutes. Yeah, very- uh, uh, Brandon, I mean, like, you know when the team sheet came out, right? When you had Jorginho down there and... Do you feel like, oh, you feel like panicking as well before the game? I was I was <laughs> underwhelmed because the whole time I bought into the fact that Saka was going to be available or Partey was going to start. But but the fact that they, that Partey didn't even start, Martinelli didn't start, and Saka wasn't even in the team, I'm like, here we go. Now it's even. Because City were missing players. I knew they were missing players. But now we're missing players. I was just like, oh, I was nervous. Yeah. Very nervous. But if Bukau yeah. Saka was playing... I think uh, I was thinking I was going to be more confident, but we won without Saka, guys. We won without our talisman. That's crazy. You've got to think as well, what I think was really interesting today, you're right. Hopefully today is that point where Arsenal fans, to a degree, barring checking who's fit and who's not fit, why watch press conferences? You, you could use Lee Gunner's terminology, they lie to you, but they lie to you because why are they going to give their strategies away two or three days before they play a football match? They're actually deep it for a minute. Think about it logically. Why is he going to tell you anything that could benefit the opponents? A boxer wouldn't do it. Sometimes boxers do it, but they do it as a mind game. I'm going to do this three times in the first round to you and I'll catch you. Makes the boxer think. But they never really generally reveal their game plan. Why would they? So why should a football manager do it? At the end of the day, he made it all about Saka in the build-up. But not a lot of people were expecting Partey. Definitely not Martinelli to be on that bench. And they both look really fit and sharp. So he's kept that one in his back pocket. Yes, by quote unquote lying to the fans. But you only take it as a lie if you don't understand what his job is to do. And that is to mentally outsmart his opponents. And you have to do that sometimes by being deceptive. And these super chats here say, never been so comfortable against City mentality. Uh, this game was all about tactics and mental strength. Really was a game of chess. Um, I think a lot of people would agree.